h5py is a Python library that provides a really elegant and simple interface to the HDF5 file format. It's basically a high-level wrapper of HDF5 for Python. Now, it, Python doesn't have an official um, library API to HDF5. It's not one of the languages that HDF5 supports. They only support C, C++, and Java officially. But the, the maintainers of H5Py have done a very good job in creating a library that takes the concepts of HDF5 and makes them very accessible in Python, in Python syntax and actually makes them look like NumPy arrays, which is a really accessible way to think about multidimensional data. So that's the underlying representation. If you know how to work with NumPy and access NumPy slices, then you pretty much can work with H5, HDF5 with H5Py. It's a pretty simple framework. Here's the few lines of code that take you through how to create a data set in, H, in H5Py. It's pretty straightforward. This is, you know, just importing NumPy because we actually need NumPy to, to declare data sets. Um, well, easily at least. This is the call to import H5Py. And this line here creates a new h5py file. It's called, in this case, newfile.h5. That little w flag means that you are writing this data set from scratch and you're opening it for write mode. If there was another file named newfile.h5 in that same directory that you're opening up and saving this to, it would overwrite that file and, and delete it. So this is this, these flags matter. And if you want to not overwrite a file but append to it, then you have to open it up into a different mode. If you're reading from it, you need to pass an R instead of a W, that kind of thing. The next step here is to create, uh, is show, demonstrates how to create a group. Now, you don't have to create a group. I just am showing what the syntax for doing that is. And so this line will create a, a group called group1 and attach it to the root node of the H5 file. Why? Because when you ask for an H5 file, you get this, this object back, and that is a pointer to the root node of the H5 file. Remember, H5, HDF5 is sort of like a file system in a file, and when you open it up from scratch, the very first thing you get is the root point of that HDF5 file. So what we're doing now is we're creating a group attached to that root point, and we're calling it group one, and we're turning that object, and that's what we're getting here. Now, the next line is going to take that group that we've created and attach a data set underneath it. And so now we're creating a data set. And that's what the next you know, few lines are. But it's all just one line. I just created you know, multi-line so that it could be easily visualized. We're calling h5group.create underscore data set. So it's, you know, this object is being, is being created a data set against. And that means we're going to, under group 1, we're creating a data set, uh, data set called data set 1. And we're defining its shape. It's a 300 by 2 by 20 two-dimensional data set. It's going to be of type uint8. Oh, that's a typo. That needs to be uint8, not unit8. My apologies for that. Um, and we're making it a chunk data set. It's going to have gzip compression. It's going to have scale offset being true. And it's going to have shuffle equals true. The shuffle just helps with gzip compression and, and scale offsetting. You don't need to worry about it, but turn it on. It's usually quite useful. And that's it. Once you call those lines, this is now created. Um, remember, this just needs to be permute this. This is uint, not unit. Now, that returns an object called h5dset that I've called. It's just a name. You can name it anything you want. And I'm going to assign five elements out of that, out of that 6,000 element array to the values 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 as a list in these locations. And I'm just indexing into this just like I would a NumPy right now. So I'm going in to the 20th element all the way up to the 25th element, and I am, I am choosing the second dimension and applying this fi these five elements to it. When you're writing, it's generally a good idea to close when you're done with your writing, so then there's your close command, and that's it. You've now written data to your HDF5 file that is chunked, compressed, scale offsetted. Um, it's 6,000 element uint8. Not bad. This line, set of code, shows you how you can read from a data set. And I'm going to just now show you the example of how you read from the data set that we just created. So we import H5, HDF5, or H5Py, uh, H, H5Py, my apologies. And 
Now we're opening up that same file, calling the file handle of the file call for it, but this time we're opening up in read mode, right? Because we want to read from it and not clobber it. Uh, if we pass the W, it would delete that file and open us a blank one. So we want to read from it. And there it is. There's our handle. And this time, you'll notice that we can just use standard key-based indexing into that H5 file to then return our data set. And once you've got that, so this is basically indexing into the group, and then it's indexing into the data set name, and now it returns a handle to the actual data set. Now, understand that when you've made this call, you have not read anything yet into Python. It's simply a pointer to that data set that exists there. So you haven't fetched any elements out yet. This is why, so this operation is totally free. It doesn't take up any time. You're just prepping everything so that you can then index into it should you want to. And in the next line, I am, and I'm pulling out two elements. So that's where the read occurs, not in the line before. And that's why if you don't choose to index the entire array and you just in choose to index parts of the data set, you'll only read out the pieces of interest. And this is doing you know, decoding all of the gzipping and all the chunking and all the scale offsetting. It's doing all that on the fly. Don't even think about it. It's completely invisible to you. And it's just fast. So that's the basics for reading, writing, and working with H5Py. It's, it makes data, working with data very, very easy because you get all of the benefits of a sophisticated file format with effectively NumPy-like syntax.